And this is a photograph taken within Red Rock Pass itself. And this is uh, a butte within the pass where you maybe can see on here there's a reddish colored rock and that's where it gets its name from. The Red Rocks which gave their name to the overflow spillway of Lake Bonneville. At this point the waters of the, I've got in quotes, Bonneville River flowed 300 feet deep. The rock outcrop, and that's, that's actually a very conservative. Mm -hmm. In some places, in some of the constrictions, it deepened up to 400 feet. The rock outcrop here is an eroded remnant of the former landscape. The elevation of the high point on Red Rock Butte is about 5,050 feet, which is just below the original elevation of the pass. Um, the highway is about 4,770. Actually, this is the edge of the highway. This is a railroad track here, but this whole area below here is about 4,770 feet above sea level. Uh, this is virtually the same elevation as the Provo shoreline of Lake Bonneville. So basically what we're saying is that not too far above Red Rock Butte here was the pre-flood landscape surface up here. Mm -hmm. Got that? Once the water flowed over, it rapidly ate its way down to this level and then it stabilized. And this is a remnant within the pass of the former rock, which would have been continuous all the way across the path, pass, uh, maybe with some exceptions, or may have been, and probably was some canyons or, or channels already through there that were occupied by the floodwaters. But it's a very flat valley floor there, so there's sediments that have been pushed through there yes. as, as the water channelized to <clears throat> escape. Exactly. And here is a <clears throat> digital map. Right here is, uh, this is the, the Red Rock Pass right here. And this is what we were just looking at. That uh, Red Rock Butte is right in here. And you can kind of see from this that what we have here is a converging channel that's narrowing into this constriction and it widens into this basin. One of the things you want to understand about water flow is that when you have, let's say that, like we talked about earlier, there was a, a period of several months over which this lake level was dropping. Sure. So during that several months, <clears throat> you could consider that this is more or less uniform flow through here. In other words, if you take a cross section here and a cross section up here, and you measured the amount of water, cubic feet per second, flowing past any given point, it would be virtually the same, right? Okay. Also, through here. So in other words, there's as much water flowing through this wide part of the channel as there is flowing through this narrow constriction on a per second basis. Mm -hmm. Well, what that means then is that as the water is coming into that constriction, the pressure behind it builds up, right? And it forces the water to move at a higher velocity. Right. Because when you have a, a larger cross section, the water, the same amount of water per second can flow than if it's narrow, but if it's narrow, it needs to speed up. It, it needs, the velocity needs to increase in order to, yes. to maintain that, that uniform flow. Well, what happens when water speeds up is it becomes more erosive. It mm -hmm. begins to pick up material, in the words in train material, picks up that material, transports that material, once it gets through the constriction and it opens up again, the water now slows down. When it slows down, it loses right. its competency to carry materials and then it begins to deposit those materials. Mm -hmm. And generally, uh, what it'll do is it'll deposit the heaviest materials first and then as you get down current, it'll be successively finer degrees Fine. of material. So oftentimes when you look at it, a, a, a flood deposited outcrop, oftentimes it's, some of these are called valley trips where you may have a, 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 a protuberance, a, let's say a, a hill projecting into the flood flow. So the water behind that projection tends to slow down, right? So there will, it will build a bar behind the projection and it's called a valley train. And you can look at that valley train and you will get what is called a paleo current indicator, which is by looking at the, the uh, size of the sediment, it'll diminish down current. So by looking at that outcrop, you can tell which way the water was flowing. Flow, correct. Yeah. So also there, there is a pull-off, right? There's a geological marker at that site, so people 
that are in this neighborhood or yes. passing through yes. north of Salt Lake to, to Pocatello or uh, American yes. Falls there in the Idaho uh, Yeah, this plane. photograph and, is probably taken from the pull-off. This is a photograph you'll see quite frequently. So, yes, right. there is a pull-off so, there. Yeah, I think there's a path you can go over toward the... Yeah. Yeah, I uh, think... Crop there. Let's see here, yeah. So then this is just going further into the pass where it's now begins descending down towards the Snake River Plain. And this is looking north into the pass. And this is looking... Are those strand lines on that hillside there? Or is this just the angle I'm seeing it? Uh, yeah, they're, yes, I think I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if those were. I mean, they're pretty faint, mm -hmm. but it does appear that those could be strand From lines. From this angle, they look fairly parallel and even. Yeah, and, and strand lines are basically horizontal lines that are left behind uh, after the draining of a body of water. We see many of those and have documented many of those throughout the pathway of the Missoula flood. Hi. Bradley Young here, producer of the Cosmography podcast, co-hosting with Randall Carlson. What we put together here was an early attempt at a podcast, 2017, when we tried out multiple studio settings, TV backgrounds, slide screens, etc. But one we did here directly related to the Bonneville flood. I am off screen in this video, and that was due to operator error, where we had no actual video of the wide shot that had both of us included and the TV. So we got Randall and the important stuff on the screen. So that's what we got for this time. Got a lot in the archives, hope to keep bringing them out, and also have some cosmographies coming up with Randall Carlson. Enjoy all the different offerings that are out now, and thanks for checking this one, and we'll see you soon. Hopefully, we'll see you in person out in the field chasing mega floods. So this is looking west over Red Rock Pass um, from uh, the mountain range to the east. Do you remember the name of that mountain range? I remember it being a hairy, scary, narrow road with the big drop off right next to it. Yes, it was. Getting, getting across there. It was, in fact, a large, uh, I mean, a narrow, scary road up into the mountains to get this shot. But we're looking across here. The water flow is from left to right. This is from south to north. Um, through here, you know, I guess the maximum discharge might have been earlier the Estimates of the peak discharge for the Bonneville flood were about 30 to 32 million, but I've seen revisions that have placed it as high as 41 million cubic 41. feet per second. I've just kind of taken the middle here, 35 million cubic feet per second. Um, here the great uh, Bonneville River, as I'm calling it, would have been about 300 feet deep and three miles wide flowing through here. So uh, that was impressive. a very impressive event that had short, an impressive short-lived catastrophic event. And as we go north, following the path of the floodwaters, this is um, uh, interstate that comes up through here. It comes up through this uh, called Marsh Valley right here, um, and then makes a sharp bend to the west, and then another bend to the northwest, and then it discharges up here. This is the beginning of the Snake River Plain up here. This is the town of Pocatello. So Pocatello is right in the mouth of this what's called now Portneuf Valley, um, which is this section of the valley. And the water spread, spilled out and spread out there and then flowed out onto the Snake River Plain. Um, American Falls Reservoir occupies a, a trough or a basin that was scoured by the floodwaters as they passed out into uh, the Snake River Plain. Uh, there's a dam down here at the southwestern uh, edge right. of the American Falls Reservoir. So that feature is always easy to pick out, even with all the labels, to see that yes. zigzag right angle right. coming across there, right into the that dog leg. Exactly. The, yeah, it's e easy to pick out. And of course, this is a very uh, impressive uh, drive um, that you make up through here, and uh, you can make some diversions off if you want to explore some of the surrounding country. But the 
the main highway follows the path of the flood, out the, the Bonneville flood out of the basin of Lake Bonneville and through these, through the passes and valleys and up to the Snake River Plain. And here's an aerial view nice. of the Port of Nick Pass. Right here, you can see this is that sharp right angle turn. And the water came through here, sloshed around this turn, sloshed around that turn. And then down here would be the Snake River Plain. And then it spread out. So was Pocatello built on a delta? Yeah, I, yeah, I would definitely think that you would find here, here is Pocatello from mm -hmm. the air, mm -hmm. um, and yes, I would, you know, yeah, it, it would be almost certain that there would be a lots of flood deposits here, almost like you said, a delta where where this water spreads out, creates this fan-shaped deposit, and the city of uh, mm -hmm. Pocatello is now built upon that. All right, so here's the Snake River Plain, and what we were just looking at, if you can see this, yeah, here comes uh, 15, Interstate 15 comes up. Dog legs over, you can see that dog leg right there. There's American Falls Reservoir. So all of this water flowed out, spread out over the plain, but then it began to focus into what is now the channel occupied by the Snake River, which, the snakes its way across here and then heads up this way and through Hell's Canyon. Mm -hmm. And then it discharges from the north end of Hell's Canyon by Lewiston, Idaho. Um, and well, the clear water comes right, in right there. It merges with the clear water and then together those uh, flow to the west and merge with the Columbia, the Columbia River. So mm -hmm. we're going to look at this area right in here because once the water becomes channelized it becomes erosive and we can see here what is called massacre rocks um, and this huge deposit of large boulders here and for scale you can see a human figure out here the water flowed from right to left this is a distributory channel so this was undoubtedly cut before the canyon floor was cut down to this level. You would have had the water sheeting in a sheet flood over the surface of the, of the Snake River Plain. It would have then concentrated in a, maybe a pre-existing swale or pre-existing channel. Mm -hmm. Once it does that, then it becomes erosive, but it'll also create distributory patterns like this. And that's what this is called. This is a distributary. So this is where water was flowing over. It then branched out to create a separate flow, but then as the flood ate this floor down of the main valley, the main trunk valley, at some point the water level dropped below this saddle here, and it then became isolated and dry. It became a fossil feature, which... Yeah, it's, it's very clear in a Google Earth image, say, where you're looking directly overhead and you can follow those yes. patterns of the, of the flow that are outside the main channel. Yeah, in fact, you can see it in this map there right here. Go. Here is the distributary channel right here. And we also see cataract formation here, which is the water flowing over the surface, plucking rock. And you see actually a streamlined form right there. Mm -hmm. And we see a pointed kind of streamlined form right here. And the, the rocks that we saw um, here forming this train of rocks is on this uh, on this bar, which is right where this arrow is pointing. So those rocks are right here. So you can see actually that the water came down and through this channel, uh, very highly erosive, probably moving at 50 miles an hour, something like that. It was also flowing over the top here, and that's what created these cataracts that you see right. here. Um, so you can see there's a channel right here that was a distributory where it flowed off, but initially what you've got a picture is that this water is flowing over this landscape, then the water becomes focused into the channels, and then it becomes extremely erosive and rapidly then can erode the floor of the channel down, and that's, that's what happened right here, and that's when this distributory uh, became isolated. Mm -hmm. 
And again, this is a state park that people can go visit, and yes. it's right off the interstate there, Interstate 86. And, uh, you know, they, they can get an up-close view yes. of, of what, what this flood's power really was right through right. this area of the Snake River. A really awesome road trip, which we've done now, is to basically start in the basin of Lake Bonneville and follow the pathway of the flood. Um, we should do it again. We should do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, when you get to the southern end of uh, Hell's Canyon, you've got to stop there and basically <laughs> take a boat through the canyon because uh -huh, there's yeah. no highways. Yeah, through jump there. on the raft. But you can pick up the highway again at the northern end of uh, Hell's Canyon, just below Lewiston and Clarkston there.